So now we have a presentation on a completely open topic, which is data and web services or internet or whatever you want to call it. And we're pleased that Jean Pierre agreed to give another in depth presentation on this topic because data has something to offer for that as well, of course. Um, there's a tool called AWS, Ada Web Server, which allows you to have Ada applications working on the internet and building web servers and clients and whatever. Okay. Except that I don't have the recommended resolution on screen two. HTTP connection, of course, but also many others. That's what part of the benefit you can manage so in the various things. Mainly used from the server side, but you have also some client side interfaces, especially to get web pages from somewhere else or to, um, to send or receive mail, for example. You have a number of packaging for building, for managing pages, we'll talk about that. That is, when you receive an incoming request, decide what kind of page you display, and facilities for building pages from templates and things like that. Plus, some facilities for distributing your server uh, very, uh, among uh, several secondary servers, so making load balancing and that kind of thing. And also a different forward WSDS. So the main difference between an AWS approach and a conventional one was well, to use, if you're using a patching, Typically, you have a big web server that does nothing else but serving pages. If you have, now the 
time is over where, when we had only static pages, most pages are done and okay, the content of the page is computed from a database or whatever. The first solution is to use CGI, which means that you send a process, an external executable is started by Apache, and the standard output of that executable becomes the, become the page that you will describe. So it's an external program that merges, for example, data from a database, templates to build the, the, the page, and gives you the page back. So in that case, the program, the part that carries on the, the intelligence of building the page, is completely outside the server. Of course, in terms of performances, it's not very good because, well, you start a new process for each request for any loaded server that can be very expensive. So there is a, a, a scripting model that's generally done using HTTP, um, PHP, or things like that, where the page includes some code that's interpreted inside the server. So you have a language interpreter in that, and you write your code, but it's inserted on the server side, it's not on your client, on, on your browser, and that code will well, get the data from the database and build the page. Here, you have a program that's executed inside the server. With AWS, you invert that structure. <coughs> AWS is a regular ADA program that can do anything you want. And inside it, you have some modules that handle the page. So you view it more like a general application and inside it, you receive requests for pages and you send your page. But here, you can have all the benefits of data. You can have other tasks doing other things than being uh, easy with web pages or whatever. So it's completely inverted structure. The server is inside the program. That's the main idea. What can you use it for? Well, the first idea, of course, is just to build a regular server. That's uh, very possible. For example, if you, if you go to the ADA Europe web page, it's a little server that I made for it. Very convenient. Uh, well, I, mean, I don't have to, to parameterize Apache and things like that. It's an autonomous program that just serves pages and builds pages from templates. Uh, also, it's possible to have a virtual site because actually an HTTP server is just an object of a data type. And you can have as many as you want and connect them to different, uh, to different uh, addresses. So it's very, it's absolutely possible to have only one program that appears at different sites. And of course, through the program, you can have the various sites that communicate with each other. Another possibility is to have HTML as a GUI. Because, well, when you want to have a nice display, you have to choose between different KDE, GNTK, other interfaces, and uh, every, you know, every now and then the one in fashion varies. You never know which one to take. Well, HTML is a good way to define a user interface after all. And you can, in, in a sense, subcontract your user interface to just some HTML pages. It has benefits, it creates also some problems. But uh, that's possible to have it. And especially if you need to have a remote interface. 
Um, for example, if you are remotely monitoring some processes, um, well, that is here, you have uh, in, in, Caen, big, um, in France a big uh, accelerator, um, particle accelerator, and some people make experiments, and then they have to watch their experiments, sometimes it's a European project. So you have people coming from Germany, from all over Europe, and they have to monitor their experiments. If you monitor it, so it's basically a real-time program monitoring particles. But if you have a web interface, then you can monitor it from home. You don't have to stay in car, although it's a nice city. And you can return home and watch your particles uh, French stream of other particles. <laughs> <coughs> and also since e AWS provides both client side and server side interfaces, you can use that to communicate between two different remote applications and especially since it supports SOAP, which is a standard for uh, computers accessing web servers. So, <coughs> first the general outline how it works. AWS manages all the HTTP protocols. So it opens the message, it gets the answer through a callback, so it's a function, and we can see that, that, it, that is called by the server, that provide the response. And then the response makes all the things required by the HTTP protocol in the new back. So in ADA you would expect that uh, the callback function is an access. We don't say pointer, it's two or letter. Say it's an access. It allows you to access a function. So something that allows you to access a function <coughs> with a request of type status.data and you return something of type response.data. You start, when you start a web server, it's a, an object of type HTTP. You connect it to the callback and some configuration object so you can, it can be uh, taken from a file or things like that so that you can state the port number of various parameters without having to uh, modify your program. So in practice, all the intelligence is made in the callback function. So if you compare it, for example, to PHP, it means that the language to build up your application is pure data. So all the benefits that we talked about before, you'll get them into your language for building web pages. So typically, all you have to do to make a simple application, you declare a server object. You start it. And you have various parameters here. When you start it, you can uh, well, it's here. You declare the call, your callback procedure. You declare how many simultaneous connections you want to allow. Uh, this is the name of a status page that allows you to display how your server is doing. Uh, port number. And if you want security, if you want security, you say security true. If you don't want it, you say security false. That the only difference between managing HTTP or HTTPS. Uh, has anyone here tried to configure Apache? Yeah. 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 Uh, it's slightly more difficult than that if you want to configure Apache for uh, handling HTTPS. And this session allows you to have per session data <coughs> attached to, to your session. 
And then your main program has to stay active. So you can simply wait until you press the Q, the Q key or the keyboard, practical uh, for the value. For a real server, you can wait, just wait forever, or wait until no server is active. So, a typical service is something like that. You get a request and you return a response. You have function that will provide you directly with all the interesting information from the request, like the uh, URI that has been called, and you can check it, and typically, depending on the URI, you can return various things. Uh, let me remind you that you might think of URI as being files on the server or something like that. Absolutely not. A URI is a string which is passed to the server. The server can interpret that string any way it pleases. Now, some for static web pages, you interpret it as a fine name. That's fine. It's just one way of interpreting it. If you want to interpret it differently, you can do it. For example, in my little server, I'm always confused because sometimes the people use ht, dot .htm or dot .html and so on. You can go to the Ada Europe uh, web page, call the same page with dot .htm, dot .html or nothing at all. It will work simply by the, because the code take it, ignore the extension and see the, only the fine name and take it up. And then you have to build a response. So you have various uh, functions that allow you to build a response. This is the simplest one, where you give it simply as a string with the content type that's required by the code. <coughs> Note that you return something which can be of any size. You have a build function here that returns a response. That response will contain the whole text of the page as built by the function. In Ada, we can return on the stack objects of any size, which means that we don't have to store them into buffers. We directly return them it will be taken, it's even better than that. In Ada, you can declare an object without specifying the size, and the size of the object that's created is inherited from the initial value. You have to give an initial value, and the size of the object is taken from the initial value. It means you cannot have buffer over it. Because either you don't have a buffer at all, or the buffer takes the size of the result. Therefore, you can have a result that's bigger than the buffer. And this has been in Ada since 1983. And we still see people complaining about buffer overflow. You know, oh, what can I do? That guy sent too much, of a, too big a string. That created a buffer overflow, that's something that can't be avoided. Well, the solution has been found 30 years ago. I'm a bit nervous about this one. So strange that people, and, and I, I think that some months ago, people who were uh, proposing new ways of bringing buffer safety into C. Well, if you want buffer safety, take a language with buffer safety, that's all. <laughs> now, when you receive it, I mentioned that a, a URI is nothing but a string. But 
uh, common convention is that you may have question marks and parameters in part of the string of form parameter equal value. And that's um, and that it's com commonly understood as a parameter taking some value. So the AWS will provide all the necessary machinery to pass the string and give them the parameters and the values. So typically, I declare here, for example, a constant of type parameters list that contains a list of parameters. Once again, I have not given the size of that list. It will be properly dimensioned from the result of that function. And then I can get the value of a parameter called the uh, count and uh, well I can get it as strings and uh, it, you can even, even have multiple times the same parameter with different values. So here it says give me the first parameter called numbers and the second parameter called numbers. Well, the important thing is you don't have to worry about passing the parameters. You have function to do that for you. And then you build a response. As I mentioned before, form, the first one is from strings that you can have computed by various means. So uh, note, by the way, here we have parameters with a default value. So S200 is the standard return code, meaning everything's OK. The other one that you may know is, of course, S404 that the page is not found. 200 are the OK messages, 400 are the uh, error messages. And if you want your message caged, I think like that. You can also directly give a file name and it will load the file name for you and return the content of the file name. So simple uh, H. Um, those functions, these are purely functional programming with functions and, and procedures. Uh, I won't have much time uh, about it to give about that, but there is also uh, another version that is more object-oriented where you have objects and the possibility of making inheritance tree and so on. So both types of programming are supported, just a matter of space. So this is a full web server here, very simple. <coughs> I declare here a server of type HTTP, so that's uh, what it serves. <coughs> you start here giving it a callback, as callback the function name service. And it just returns a string called the same hello world. So what this means, you, you take that, you run it on your computer, <coughs> it will make a server, whatever page you you, you request, it will respond hello world. That's very simplistic, but it's a full server run. If you want something a little more sophisticated, here is a static page server, that is, all your pages are given as findings. So you interpret the URI as a finding. So that's just a different uh, service function. The rest is last, like in the previous example. So I get the URI. I remove the then uh, slash slash at the beginning. You notice here that's a, a slice of a tree. You can check if it's a regular file, then you return it, the content from uh, the previous, uh, from the file function from the other side. Uh, and if not, then you respond with a message with code. 
S404 and read the page chain URL. That's enough to make a simple uh, page search. <coughs> now, I mentioned that when you start a server, you can start it either as HTTP or HTTPS. Well, all you have to do is um, to set the security parameter to choke, and that's all. Um, it manages all the questions about the certificate. The simple version, you just use its own certificate. Otherwise, if you want to go into it, you can specify which certificate to use. It supports various protocols. And so why would you want a server which is unsafe when you can have a safe one almost for free? Well, honestly, uh, well, you could ask why you do. We still have some sites with HTTP now that we have HTTPX. Um, what? Well, because of the decoding and encoding involved, <coughs> that's true that HTTP, HTTPS is slightly slower. Not much of a difference, and only, unless you have a, a very heavily loaded server, you are quite unlikely to see the difference. What prevents most people from using HTTPS is that in general it's very hard to configure, especially in the page. But here it's just a matter of having a boolean true or false. So there is not, not, uh, no real reason to not use HTTPS. <coughs> of course, in general, when you build a page, you Want it, except if you have a purely static page, you need to build it from various sources with variable elements. So, these are, it is nothing else than a big string. But string manipulation is always delicate, and it's better to separate the fixed content presentation, beautiful pictures, and so on, from the variable content. You have a beautiful table that is quite something you want to separate it from the content of the table. So you can adjust the presentation without changing your program. To that effect, uh, AWS comes with a very nice um, component called the template parser. It's very useful to build HTML pages, but you can use it for any purpose. I mean, uh, some people use it for very different things than just doing uh, HTML pages. And no, he's not here. This year, David Sauvage, who came in last year, made um, a framework for Ada that uses the template parser to generate code uh, according to certain uh, coding patterns from various so it can be used for most things. So this allows you 100% code and design and graphical design to uh, Oh, I already said that. And so you start from a template, which is a plain text file, or even an internal thing. And inside, you can have comments, like a statement, I'll give you an example, and variables. And it's just a kind of super microprocessor. It replaces the tags with the values, and in, it, it interprets comments. So you separate your ADA part will retrieve information from the database, associate it to the tags, and all the presentation is 
in the template. So you have nothing executable in your HTML. Okay, you separate them completely. So here is an example. Uh, it should be the devil commercial ad here it's for uh, the special marker, so that's a comment. And it says here, hello, and that's a tag. At underscore name underscore at means that's how we spell the tag. On your, in your program, you can define an object of that translate table, and you have constructor that associate the string, well, the name that's here, to a value. And then you have to a simple function parse. You parse that template with those translations, and that will give you a resulting uh, string here. Okay? So this separates the variable part from the fixed part. <laughs> in addition, you have some comments that you can put in the template. So comments that's easy. You can have expressions. And so typically, if a variable is equal to something, or if a variable is the empty string that allows you to provide a default value, so you see, it's, uh, you, you could put that in the code, or you could put that in the HTML. Sometimes it's not, uh, well, it's up to you to decide if it's algorithmic or just presentation. OK, if I have 0 and I want just to put a space, is that presentation, or should I, in the program, decide to substitute it here? Well, that's a design decision. In your application. Tables are very convenient. It allows you to give not a single value, as I mentioned in my uh, previous example, but a tag can be replaced by a vector. And the table allows you, it's a kind of iterator if you want, and it repeats a certain part of your HTML, taking one value at a time from the base. So it can be one or two dimensional, and it allows you to make you able for, for your own, for, for, for your pages. And include, if you want, a page to, if you want to split your page into several or have standard headers, for example. Sometimes you want um, to split pages. You have one logical page, but it would be too big to fit on a reasonable screen. You, when you what? Google well, 100,000 results to your query, you, want this, uh, you want, don't want to display that on a single page, of course. So logically, you return one page, but you want it to be split onto several pages. That's a server that allows you to split Pages, various pages are built on the fly, and as soon as they are used, they disappear. So you don't have you don't have memory leads. You don't have to put them on disk or things like that. Uh, that's all managed by AWS. And well, the it's two stages. Sure. Transient pages are those pages that disappear automatically, and it's used by <coughs> split pages that allow you to actually split logical pages or some real pages. I don't know if I, I have some mm -hmm. demos that I can show you if you have some five minutes and then I can show you for the photos. Sessions allow you to uh, 
store data attached to some users. When you are dealing with several users at the same time, you know, you have to... You don't want to get uh, the shopping basket of someone, someone that came here before you, of course. You want to keep your own shopping basket. So you have to collect data, at least an identifier, to each of the users. So that's managed by it. Streams, we didn't talk about streams. We had some features in data. Uh, well, to be honest, it was uh, inspired by a C++ stream. Um, well, every language takes a good feature of the other language. That's normal. That's what I can try to do. I think my main, um, my main concern about Java is that it, they didn't look into ADA. If they had looked into ADA, there are certain things that they would have done differently. They, they fell into some traps, especially concerning the multitasking that were well known in the AI world for the long time. But if the I mean C picked up the templates from ADA generics, ADA picked up the strings from C. It's a good thing to take a good idea to the It manages automatically file upload, so you don't have a function to do that. Server push is no more in fashion because it keeps the channel open and so it's uh, very heavy load in general. You don't want to do that, but you have it if you want. The status page that's provided by the, by the server. Authentication, you see, when you are asking a password to the user to go further, so that's also all supported. Some uh, functions to log what's happening, and while well, they had the good idea of taking the same log format as the one used with Apache. Because you have lots of uh, tools that are made to inspect the log file from Apache, so they work the same way with the other guys. You have a client mailer using SMTP, so you can send mail from uh, your application. That's very convenient. I, I have uh, an application running in my office. If anything bad happens, wherever I am, my program sends me a mail with all the contacts and what's happening. Or it sends me reminders, oh, you have a training session very soon, you better prepare your slides. But it can also serve as a mail server, so it handles also the pop protocol. Um, I'm not sure it handles IMAP. Uh, Uh, maybe I don't. And a full webmail is provided directly. Where it's a, a webmail is nothing but a page that handles the port, so it's just provided ready to use. Plus, very, very thing that you may need to have your page to run the directory, um, translator between various formats. Um, these are, well, well, various exceptions. Uh, Ajax. Uh, well, you pronounce that? Ajax. Something like that. Um, that's something that's quite, you know, it allows you to have dynamic pages. Well, it's not really pages, it's more even uh, driven. It's even driven pages where you fly uh, the cursor over over a part and uh, the page and then something pops up, something like that. Uh, that's in general quite difficult to handle, but you have nice, uh, a nice interface that takes out most of the burden from my <coughs> Dispatches. So sometimes you receive an incoming request 
and depending on the kind of request you want to identify it as a real page or as a computed page or as something that's on a different server and so on. So the dispatcher will first inspect the request and depending on their strict area, change what is called back. So the URI dispatcher dispatches according to the URI given as a regular expression. So you can have various regular expressions and dispatch to various places depending on the one that matches. The page dispatches it gives you directly the static pages given as files and returns, a uh, well actually passes a template if the file is not found. So you can have your own page for the 404. Uh, method dispatcher, the, I go quickly over this one. Uh, I don't know what uh, the first one well, I think I did. And this one is more interesting since it will uh, call a different callback depending on the post part of the URI. That's the URI used at the, the, web, the server name. So you can have various addresses that correspond actually to the same server and then you dispatch according to the name that has been used to write the, to, for the page. They, this way you can have, for example, apparently totally different servers that are inside the same program. So you can communicate or you can have a user interface and a manager interface. Uh, for example, one which is a free access, one which is a protected access for the manager with a communication and so on. And depending on the, the name you use, you will dispatch to different things. Time dispatcher. It changes what's being called depending on the time of the day. So if you want to have a different pages than night, for example. And something to manage those uh, transient pages. And so, so what is so? That means simple object access protocol. Imagine you want to get information from a website. <coughs> if you are a human, you want to have a beautiful page and you read a page. If you are a computer, beautiful pages are not especially easy to get information from. You'd rather have raw information in a form of string that has the right content and certainly you don't want to have uh, all the ads and everything that you can find as in a web page. So SOAP is really web for computers. Okay? You, when you request something from, it uses HTML, but in a very special format, and it allows you to make a kind of remote sub-program call and you just ask something and get the answer and don't have all the presentation later it's in a way that's more easily passed from computers. So I mentioned that it was possible to use it for distributed computing. First, you can simply communicate over HTTP. After all, Nothing forces you to return something that's readable for humans. I mean, you have an HTTP client, an HTTP server. The client sends a string 
It can be interpreted any way you want. And the server returns a string. So you can just communicate like that and hope that nobody will try to look at that string on a computer. That's the first way you can achieve distribution. Uh, you have also a function called hot pods that allows a second AWS program to be started at any time and that second server can register to the first one and the first one will delegate some of the job to the other one. So you can dynamically start new servers as a loading, creating, or for various reasons and they register to the main one and all the services are redirected. That's just to give you a picture of course. I don't have time to give you all the details, but in some cases it can be quite interesting. And then uh, some uh, the other possibilities. So I, I mentioned it. LDAP, I, it's a protocol for directory access. I, mean, I didn't use it personally, so I don't want to give much details. And uh, Jabber, which is a chat protocol. And of course, it does. Uh, will prevent you from using our marvelous Annex E. Well, what we call Annex E is a way in ADA to make distributed application. That's very, we didn't talk so much about it uh, this year, we did in previous year. In short, an ADA program can be made of several executables that communicate together. And those executable don't need to be on the same machine. And you do that by just adding one little line to a usual program that says PrideMap Remote Call Interface. And then you have lots of machinery that goes automatically. And you can do nice things like distributed objects in the sense of object oriented programming or um, distributed uh, 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 RPCs, remote process call, procedure call, and so on. Um, we have a big fan of NXE here, Xavier in the back. Uh, if you want to have more information about NXE, email. Complete um, uh, how you coverage uh, uh, acquisition systems for uh, nuclear uh, re uh, not reactors uh, accelerators and it all works with the uh, So the night a bit of precision concerning SOAP. SOAP is the way I mentioned to access services from the web. Of course, a service on the web is public. So how does the caller know how the service is called and what are the parameters or things like that? You have a document called a WSDL document, text file, that describe a service provided by a SOAP server and how you should call it. So when you write a SOAP server, you must provide a WSDL document to tell your future clients how to call it. And with AWS, the whole process has been 100% automated, which of course, because this talk is about safer web means, first, of course, you don't have to write it yourself, but you are certain that this corresponds to the service you provide because it's shared to the So we start from an ADA package, an ADA specification, a regular ADA specification that provides some service the package provides procedure service. You have a utility called EDA2WSDL 
that will automatically analyze that specification and generate the corresponding WSDL document. And you have another tool, WSDL2 ADA, that generates a skeleton for the body of the packages implementing services as described in a WSDL document. And therefore, you just write your specification well. You don't have to beef up the bodies, of course, to tell what you have to do. But everything <coughs> is generated automatically, and the server is completely generated from those two uh, tools in a row. So, if you compare with the competition, what can we say? The main difference is that you can have all your application into a single executable. You have also a facility, because you need some files external to your application, like some pages, your templates, and so on. But there is also a tool that will embed all the necessary files into the executable itself. So you have a web server, you adjust your file that you want, and once it's working, you can make one executable out of it and give it to someone else. And the full server, including all necessary files, are put into the executable. Well, except for that, the difference is that when you change the functionality, you need to recompile, of course. But if you have external files, then you don't need to recompile. You just change the templates. It's nice to have processing separated from this point, which is a big issue when you have um, server-side Java or PHP or things like that. The code is mixed into the page. <coughs> it, uh, is, we have said that quite a lot, multi-task. And by the way, AWS itself uses uh, multitasking a lot. So having multitask into the server, having tasks that protect against concurrent access to some parts and so on, is just regular ADA programming. And a number of things that are quite difficult in the Apache program made it. Efficiency. Well, you don't need to start the process for each request. But AWS is known to be very, very efficient. Now, we uh, that. So you want to who mentioned that? Uh, who? Uh, who said he made the comparative speed? Uh, Thomas Berger made one. Uh, oh. Some time ago, one of my colleagues uh, he compared AWS to Node.js because that was supposedly the fastest. But uh, unlike Node.js, AWS was actually so fast that he could find a race condition in the Apache test suite. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, for a simple, very simple, it was a very simple, no nonsense uh, test case. At that time, AWS was actually faster out of the box than Node.js. So, uh, supposedly Node.js has become a little bit faster by now. But, but well, efficiency is certainly more reason to use able AWS than it's uh, reason not to use. I prefer to have first hand information. Easy to deploy. And where it really shines is when it's part of the only when the web part, only a small part of the application. Give you the, the the example of an experiment that has real-time constraints and you want to watch it from a remote place, then well the web interface is 
just a small part of it, although it's an important part of it. And so that's uh, nice to have a full language to handle a regular application with the server. It's a free product, but you can have also the support from Elator. And here are some users that you can find. And uh, well, in, uh, at uh, the, uh, side, uh, the next conference, uh, if you want, EDA Europe, EDA dash Europe2014.org, and you will have something that when you get. Uh, it for you did it for its own program, it Russia also, and there is a currency change, yes. Yeah, and uh, well, uh, that figure is a bit old, I think there are more than 300 users now. So, it's definitely mature technology, it's been used for quite a time for various areas of project. More than a web server because it gives you full access to a powerful language. Supports many protocols. So really a complete web development framework. Once again, it's not a miracle solution. It's something to consider when you are uh, inspecting solution for uh, making something that has a connection to the web. I have a yes. I have a number of applications running that. So if you want to little bit more now, no time. But after all, of course, I can show. Yeah. Is there any further? Do you have a plan for the implementation of the TLS? Uh, what do you want to know? Is there any further development plan for the implementation of CLS? Um, you write to pascal at opry.org. <laughs> he will tell you. Okay. Uh, he's the one who developed that. He's working from for the French electricity company. Originally, it was to manage the um, document. Uh, uh, for accessing technical documents for for uh, well, it's, uh, he knows better than I or whatever. It's, it's, it's um, part of the, the, it's on the eighty four website, isn't it? As well. Yes. 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 So the, the whole net tracking system is made with that. Okay. And and you're supporting it, but you're not developing it further. I I would call on developing it actively. Yeah, no, we are. In fact, uh, Pascal Fried is also a consultant for oh, our right. Okay, that's the relationship. Okay, mm -hmm. okay. And, uh, well, that's a good example because uh, on Elacor side, you choose the download package, even for the legal software. Let's talk about the legal software right here. So you want the various pieces of the NAT technology, you go to the legal side, and you check the pieces that you want. And it makes a big uh, zip uh, file of all the pieces that you requested, and it sends it as a, just one file because it has a full language behind it. Yeah? Yeah? For the time management, then taking account the sort of client time, or is it just a seller time? The time management process. Well, uh, you can have access to all the information that is in the hidden, depends what you want to do with that. Uh, of course, sitting running on your computer, you have access, there is a package ela.calendar where you have a hot function that gives you the current time. Now, I'm not a big expert in HTML headers, but I think there is one with the time of the request. So you, I'd say you have access to both, and after that, with your application, that's true. If I have a your question, go ahead. Well, uh, uh, I think you have an idea. Yeah. Um, from the HTTP protocol, I don't know, could we refer to 
to the appropriate document. Uh, on the ADA side, it's given by uh, the characteristic of package ADA the calendar. But the, the accuracy cannot be less than 20 millisecond, which is for a web server. Uh, in practice, it's much better than that. You know. 